What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and with iOS 14 getting closer and closer to being unveiled by Apple, the leaks are starting to pour in, and man, do we have some exciting stuff to share today. We're talking a redesigned home screen, the ability to unsend iMessages, an all new AR application, third party wallpaper support, and so, so much more. So in this video, we're gonna discuss the latest leaks and rumors with iOS 14 and iPadOS 14, and these are no longer just strictly rumors, some of these are actually confirmed features to be coming in iOS and iPadOS later this year. And we're also going to be discussing some of the latest hardware leaks with the iPhone 12, the iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2, the new Apple Watch, AirTags, and just so, so much more. So I will also have timestamps in the description of this video so you can jump around to whatever interests you most because this will be a lot of information in this video and it will be pretty long, I'm sure. So let's start off with iOS 14. So 9to5Mac got their hands on the code of an early development build of iOS 14 and they have been dissecting it to find any and everything new in this upcoming major iOS release. And perhaps the biggest change they found that's coming to iOS 14 this year is a new redesigned home screen or more like an additional home screen because we are reporting reportedly going to be seeing a list view of all of our applications installed on our iPhones now. So this will be similar to what we see on Android with the app drawer and similar to like the list view option on watchOS, like on your Apple Watch, and also similar to the jailbreak tweak home list. Now we're still gonna have the same grid layout and the icons are probably gonna look the same as they did on iOS 13 here, but this additional page on the home screen is gonna add a lot more complexity to iOS and it's gonna make it a lot better and more like Android, which is a good thing in this sense and in this feature, because it's gonna allow us to get to certain applications quicker and more efficiently. And we're also gonna have different sorting options and filters like only showing apps with unread notifications, which could be very, very useful. It's also gonna use smart suggestions based on Siri to have applications that we use the most often and at certain times of the day closer to the top of the list. So it's gonna use some machine learning and things like that as well. It's not gonna just be a grid of random applications in alphabetical order, although you can do that based on the code. Now, of course, this is excellent news, and hopefully this means that a new homepage layout, or at least the ability to move applications around to wherever you want, like you could do on Android here, will be coming in the future to iOS. Plus widgets. I mean, I think we all at this point on iOS want widgets like we can on Android. I think it would be cool to have the ability to add widgets to iOS in the future. And hopefully this is a step in the right direction by having the app drawer essentially on iOS. Hopefully we will continue to build on that and get more changes to the home screen of iOS. Now we also have some changes coming to wallpapers in iOS 14. So in iOS 13, you guys know if you go into your settings right here and then you go to wallpapers and you go to choose new wallpaper, you have dynamic, you have stills, and you have live. Those are the three sections for the default iOS wallpapers. Well, with iOS 14, we're gonna be seeing these wallpapers categorized by the subject of the image. So like for example, we'll have earth and moon, we'll have flowers or we'll have like space. So we're gonna have a much more specific and much more organized list view for the albums here when it comes to wallpaper. So that'll be interesting to see how that's done because it could get a little bit clunky and a lot to maneuver through, but we'll see how that works. And reportedly another album, whether it's in wallpapers right here or whether it's in the photos application somewhere, one of those albums will be to auto submit your best shots to Apple for their shot on iPhone challenge. So you guys know how they have that marketing campaign shot on iPhone and they're shown on billboards and things like that. So now it seems that you won't have to share these images on social media. You'll be able to do it straight from your phone through the photos application, which will be really nice. Now that's not the only thing changing when it comes to wallpapers. Apparently in iOS 14, Apple is finally going to allow us to import wallpapers from third party applications right into the wallpaper section inside of settings. So I never thought I'd see this day. This is something you could do with a jailbreak. This is obviously something you could do on Android, but in iOS 14, it appears they will be able to use third parties to import wallpapers into the official wallpaper application here. Now, AR or augmented reality was rumored years ago to be a focus of Apple's in 2020. And it appears that the AR push is going to ramp up once again with iOS 14. We saw a little bit about this in iOS 13. We saw a little bit of the AR with like the measure application and things like that but with iOS 14, it's gonna ramp up even more. So Apple is developing a new application codenamed Gobi that will allow you to get more information about the world around you by using AR in places like the Apple Store and Starbucks 
to start with and it will likely expand with time. So for instance, you would be able to hold your phone up in an Apple store and see prices. You'd be able to compare iPhones and get other information from this application. And I would assume in Starbucks, you'd be able to use AR to see the menu, see the prices and other info like that. Maybe their hours, you'd be able to see all that information using AR and just holding your phone up, you know, with the camera going around. And according to 9to5Mac, the iPhone would know which AR experience to start based on QR code tags in the area, or maybe even the upcoming air tags could act as triggers to know which AR experience to start on your iPhone in that specific application. So this will be really interesting. I have always loved AR. I think it's not even close to its full potential just yet. But with iOS 14, we could be seeing that potential possibly being reached. Now, another big change coming to iOS 14 is with iPads and iPad OS 14. So later this year, we're going to be seeing rich system-wide support for mouse cursors on the iPad. So basically full on support now for mice with the iPad, not hidden within the settings, not going super deep into settings, accessibility and all that, just to hook up a mouse. We're now going to have full mouse support on iOS 14, which is really big. So according to 9to5Mac, using a mouse on the iPad will be similar to how we use a mouse on the actual Mac. This will be really interesting. So in iPad OS, as you guys know, or as you may know, if you've used a mouse on iPad OS, when you have a mouse connected, basically on the screen, you always see the cursor on the display. Even if it's still, the cursor is always there and it's pretty annoying, but with iOS 14, the pointer is going to disappear automatically after a few seconds of not touching the connected mouse or trackpad. Yes, trackpad. We'll talk about that more here in a second. So we'll also be seeing support for multiple pointers depending on what it's being hovered over. So just like on a computer, if you're hovering over a link, it will turn into the pointing hand and it'll be an arrow everywhere else where you're not on a link. So it's gonna be a lot more realistic, a lot more like you're actually using a computer or a laptop now when you use a mouse on the iPad. Now, Apple is also bringing support for Mac-like gestures, like tapping with two fingers to right click and all the other gestures to iPad with iPad OS 14. And this is gonna be done via a new smart keyboard model that of course is going to have a built-in trackpad. So yes, this will be very similar to like you're using a MacBook or of course using a trackpad on an iMac. These new gestures and features and the new smart keyboard is going to be an absolute game changer and will definitely make the iPad even more of a laptop replacement. And this is all gonna add a whole new element for interacting with external displays as well. So you're gonna be able to drag like your mouse from one display to another if you have an external monitor. You can you know drag and use your fingers on your iPad while the mouse is on another display. And just, just so many options, so many possibilities with real mouse support on iPad OS 14. I just think it's gonna be great and it's gonna make the iPad even more powerful than it already is, which is just incredible to even think about. Now we have not heard prices on these new smart keyboards just yet, but I'm sure they will be around 250 bucks, given the fact that the smart keyboard without the trackpad right now costs 200 bucks for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now going back to the iPhone and iOS 14, we also have some awesome new changes set to come to HomeKit. So we got the HomeKit secure video feature back in iOS 13, but with iOS 14, we're gonna be getting facial recognition. So they're calling the feature face classification. And apparently you'll also be able to get notifications based on the detection of specific people in your family. Now we're also gonna be seeing night shift for smart lights throughout your house. So with iOS 14, HomeKit's gonna gain the ability to automatically adjust the color temperature throughout the day. So that's gonna be a nice addition if you do have smart bulbs inside of your house. And speaking of home accessories, tvOS 14 is also set to include a new permanent audio output option for the Apple TV. So for example, you could permanently select a HomePod or a set of HomePods as the default audio output without manually choosing the AirPlay 2 target every single time. Now I'm also hoping that we see some software improvements to the HomePod later this year since it really needs it. And a lot of times I feel like the HomePod is just kind of neglected when it comes to software updates because we get software updates for everything else, but not really too many for the HomePod and it can really use them. Now there are also some accessibility changes coming later this year as well with iOS 14. We're gonna have a new feature that will be able to detect important sounds like fire alarms, sirens from police cars and doorbells. And basically it's going to translate these sounds into haptic alerts 
for those with hearing loss or that are deaf. This is going to be major for accessibility and just catering to the ones with hearing loss. And adding to that, there's said to be support for the camera to detect hand gestures as well. So there's just a lot of things coming to accessibility in iOS 14 that's really going to improve everything about iOS and the iPhone for those with hearing loss. And speaking of health related features, the upcoming Apple Watch will also gain support for detecting blood oxygen levels for the first time. This is something that Fitbit has had and you know other competitors as well. So it's about time Apple gets something like this. We're also gonna see improvements to the ECG feature as well. So these are likely going to be only available on the upcoming Apple Watch Series 6 and Watch OS 7 but we'll see it could come to the series five as well via software. We just don't know enough about it just yet. Now, moving on to something very interesting that Apple is currently testing. So according to Mac rumors, we could be seeing new iMessage features like unsending messages, mentions, and typing indicators in group chats with iOS 14. So yes, we could soon be able to unsend messages after we send them in iMessage. And according to the code, a message will be shown to both the sender and the recipient when a message has been retracted. So once you unsend that message, both parties will know that you retracted that message. Now we don't know if there's gonna be a time limit on unsending the messages, kind of like you can with Gmail and unsending emails, but we'll see. So this could be very, very interesting. Not sure if this is actually going to develop and be a real thing, but I think a lot of people would like this. And there's also going to be a big group of people that won't like this. Now, Apple is also testing mentions in group chats. So similar to Slack, you'd be able to tag other contacts by just typing their name, like you'd put an at before and then type in the name. And once you put an at right there, it would just show a suggested list of contacts of people you want to mention. So if you're in like a group chat with a lot of people and you want to respond to just one person and you know 10 people typed after that, you could just mention, hey, at Brandon and it will pull up the name and send them a notification saying they were notified or they were mentioned rather. And you could type your response just like so, just like you can do in something like Slack. And then like I mentioned, we could also be seeing typing indicators in group chats like you can with normal iMessages. You guys know when somebody's typing, you could see if you're on the receiving end, you could see when they're typing, you can't do that in group chats right now, but that could be a feature coming to iOS 14. We could also be seeing the ability to mark the last message of a conversation as unread after opening it. So you guys know how you have the red receipts. You can actually mark it as unread if you would like to. So we have that possibly coming and also an expansion of the slash me command for sharing status updates like you can on the Mac. Now these iMessage features are not confirmed and they may not be done in time for iOS 14, but they are definitely being worked on and tested by Apple as we speak. So hopefully they do come in iOS 14, but if not, they will likely be in iOS 15. So now let's move on to the hardware. So we've now received even more leaks about the iPhone 9 or the iPhone SE 2, the iPad Pro, new Apple TV and Apple TV remote, AirTags, and even the over-the-ear headphones, basically confirming that all of these products are indeed real and are indeed coming later this year. Now starting off with the over-the-ear headphones, 9 to 5 Mac found icon glyphs of these over the ear headphones in the iOS 14 code. And these are likely what Ming-Chi Ko reported on back in 2018. I think I made a video in 2018 talking about this and they're finally coming two years later. So these headphones are likely going to have the AirPods naming scheme. Now, of course, AirPods Pro would be perfect for these headphones, but of course that's already taken with a product right now. So that's not gonna work. So we're gonna have to wait and see, but these are going to be Apple branded and they are going to be professional studio style over the ear headphones. And they're likely going to be released around the time of the new iPhones and iOS 14 later on this year in September. Now, as far as the pricing, I would expect a price tag around the $350 mark, just like the Beats headphones are priced right now. And of course, Apple does have a deal with Beats. You know, they sell the Beats and things like that. So these are probably going to overtake the Beats and it's probably gonna be around the same price tag, but we will see. Now the iOS 14 code also includes references to the upcoming iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2. Now we don't see any further information about it. We know it's gonna have the iPhone 8 body style and things like that. I just made a video on the iPhone SE 2. So if you didn't see that, I will leave a link down in the description below. It's a full video just on this product, uh, but basically we don't see anything new. We just see that it's referenced and just another indication that it is coming later this year. But as for the AirTags, we do have some additional info based on the code. So apparently the AirTags will be able to be set up in bulk through iOS and there's also going to be a user replaceable battery just like with the tile tracker. So it's gonna be pretty much a direct competitor 
to tile. It's gonna be very, very similar to the tile trackers right now. And I cannot wait for air tags. I think it's a feature that a lot of people are kind of sleeping on and don't really see as being a big deal, but I think air tags will be huge. And pretty much everybody that has an iPhone is probably gonna have an air tag at some point. Now we also saw references to a new Apple TV and a new Apple TV remote, although new features are not clear just yet based on the code itself. Now, as for the 2020 Worldwide Developers Conference, this is likely not going to be happening in person like it has every other year. And this of course is due to the health scares from the recent outbreak. So we're likely going to see iOS 14 beta one still released within the first couple of weeks of June. It's just not going to be an event in person. Like people are not going to be attending the event this year. It could be streamed online. I bet it will be streamed online. It's probably just gonna be Apple on stage announcing it or we could even see just like a press release although i think we are going to see some kind of keynote or something showing off all the features inside of ios 14 and maybe even new products now as for the supposed march event we have the same news so we were expecting a march event on march 31st now this was never confirmed by apple or anything like that so they don't technically have to cancel it or say anything about it but there are reports out there saying now that there's definitely not going to be a march event so as for the products that we expected to see, like the iPhone 9, iPhone SE 2, AirTags, and things like that, we're not sure when those are gonna be released, uh, basically just due to the outbreak and the delay in manufacturing. So we don't know when the iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2 is going to be released now, but we do know that there's not going to be an announcement at the end of March, or there's not gonna be an event at the end of March. We could still see some kind of press release or something like that, but we just don't know right now. The outbreak and just everything that's going on in these manufacturing facilities is just throwing everything off and delaying pretty much everything when it comes to Apple and really any company right now. So there you have it, guys. That is the latest on iOS 14 and all the new Apple products coming up. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you think about everything down in the comment section below. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you are excited for iOS 14 and these upcoming Apple products. And of course, make sure you guys do subscribe because I will be bringing you a lot more information about iOS 14 and I will be covering iOS 14 in depth here on the channel, just like I did with iOS 12, iOS 13, and every other previous version of iOS. So definitely hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you get notified when I post these new videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.